see you guys and for you to say how much you appreciate the work of our colleagues and us. It really means a lot, so I hope you're all great. Looking forward to some cool questions. Thank you. Just so we get it out of the way. Yeah, but no, I, I was maybe four and a half years, which is still a really great amount of time. And I 
enjoyed every second of it. Um, but yeah, I, I would say 90% probably was was captured. There, there were, I was one of those people that I thought, I want to do my own stunts. Until I saw the stuntmen do the stunts, and I thought, there's no way I, I would ever be able to do that. I couldn't do it. I couldn't physically do it. So thank God for those people. Can you make a here? Okay, so I have a question for each of you. The first one's for Rod. I noticed that there was a huge difference in the, well, maybe a small difference in the voice between the first game and the second game. Kind of your voice. Is there anything that you did to try to sound younger because this is a prequel? And then my question for uh, Roger is, are you sick of people asking you to say Lenny? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, I don't, I don't know that I consciously made a decision to try to sound different. They could have done that on their end with all the technology that I don't know about. But um, I do know that the role was very different. And I also know that young John, I kind of was young John in real life. I had an older sister, all of her friends, and I wanted to be, you know, I looked up to them, I wanted to get the same respect that they had, but I was just a little brother, so I was kind of a little punk. And uh, <laughs> that annoying John Marston. That was actually me when I was in high school too, so I, I felt very natural playing. <laughs> it was really weird seeing a younger John Marston. I remember the first day I worked with Rob, I was a huge massive fan of the first Red Dead Redemption, and I get the sides, and the first time we worked together was that wolf who went rescuing you from the wolves, which is very early on in the game, you all know that bit, right? And I'm looking at the pages, and I'm just slagging John Marston off for about four or five pages, and I'm thinking, I can't say this. John Marston, uh, it's in the script. And to answer your question, no, I'm not tired at all of doing it. I love that you guys love that mission. It's so funny when we were doing it. I had no idea that it was going to catch on the way it did. But the fact that you guys love it is awesome. So I'm I'm a, a, I don't mind right now if you don't mind, Roger. I'm I just did it like five minutes ago. Did you not hear me? I want it. like top secret and you can't talk about them so and it's like five years like you said but like how's the feeling when it's like the time that you can share like to your family to your friends that all your hard work that you have done so like how's that feel like, to share with everyone like about all those years it was funny, yeah, the NDA is quite strict, and understandably so, you know, we don't want to spoil it, spoil it for the fans, you know, we don't want the story to get spoiled for you. But it was funny, yeah, I was working on it for so long, and I couldn't tell anyone. I told my wife, obviously, but, you know, I could tell a lot of friends and colleagues, yeah, I'm just, I can't talk about it, but I'm working on a video game. And about three or four years later, people would go, you still working on that video game, Raj? Oh, uh, you know, it's okay if you're not working all the time. You don't need to make up jobs and lie to us. They're like, no, seriously, I just can't talk. Oh, the game you can't talk about. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, but uh, my wife, my wife wants to play it, but she hasn't found the time yet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Carolina Grimasa! I've never done Red Dead Redemption with Matt, but... She was in Red Dead 2 as well. Uh, we met, yeah, we, me and Car we all worked with Caroline a couple of days, haven't we? Yeah. Speaking of the Lenny mission, you remember when Arthur gets a little overserved and he's walking around the place and everyone looks like Lenny? And then he goes into a room and there's a couple doing a horizontal dance. <laughs> Carolina was the, the... She was the dance partner on top. I will let you ask your question. I just wanted to crash them for two seconds. Yeah. Cheers, Gary. All right. And it would totally be sombre because she's got a great haircut. Yeah. So I got a bit of a story to tell before I get to my question. Uh, so stay with me for a little. Um, years ago, I went to another anime convention that was called another convention here, basically anime. Uh, and there is a cosplay contest sort of thing. And for years, I, for like three years, I've been working on this weird, stupid skill. I would just hear boredom. I think it's like. So my question is, uh, any pre-existing character, doesn't have to be Red yet, anything like, if you could voice any character, video game, TV, whichever, um, what would you choose? 
I want to be the thing from Fantastic Four. I think I could do a good job of that. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it would be fun to play like a Michael Bell type character, but I'm not kidding. And honestly, if you don't know this, you need to know. Peter Blumquist is one of the coolest people we like. Yeah, he's a funny guy. But for him to be the way he is in real life, and then for him to be as believable as he is as Michael Bell, he's so talented. I think that would be a really cool challenge, and I would like to maybe, I don't know that I'm going with Michael Bell, but so somebody <laughs> like that. Part or any part that stood out during the voice acting of Red Dead 2? Well, sir, I got a, kind of a, maybe a different kind of answer than Roger may have. When, when we shot Red Dead Redemption, being the playable character, I, I didn't have the freedom to, you know, you get in these situations where you're going to go do some real intense gunfight or something like that. You, you may even get into a fight with somebody, whatever the case may be. When it comes right down to the action, part of that scene, like the, the actual battle. As the playable character, you don't get to you don't get to act that out because that's what the person who's playing the game to enjoy. So you would get all the way up to that point and then just have to get into a neutral mode. So then, <laughs> so so this time around I had the opportunity to watch him do everything that he was doing and I could be the wild man running in there and shoot my gun and stuff. So that was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I liked, you know, we worked together for so long, we eventually became a gang ourselves, you know, so I liked any time we were all together. Like, for example, when you bring Jack back from Bronte and they have a big party uh, in, in the Swampland, that was really fun, because it was all of us get, got together. Gabriel, who plays Javier, who's playing guitar, and it's pretty hard to play guitar when you've got balls on your fingers. And, uh, you know, another time when you rescue Sean, that was wonderful. I remember there was an option to go fishing with Dutch or Hosea, I think it's shortly after you, one of the Trelawney missions early on. And uh, you go singing in the boat, and I remember we were rehearsing that with the guys, and by that point we were about four and a half years into the project. So it was wonderful, any time we were working with the gang was a wonderful time. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I've been a huge fan of the series since uh, 2010. Thank you. Since I played it about the first break down in 2016. Uh, my question is, is there any uh, scene uh, that didn't make a part of the game that you were disappointed in the world that didn't make it? There was a lot of stuff that got cut. Uh, my memory is not that great, you know, because we did so much. So much. I think it was pretty similar. Red Dead 2 was probably similar to maybe five or six seasons of a TV show. Uh, so yeah, some stuff did ultimately did make it. You know, I remember there was one mission that you do with Dutch, which was really fun because you uh, you go on the train and you're trying to kill some bounty hunters that are going after Dutch. So I remember that didn't quite make it in the end. There was a lot of stuff. You know, I think when we started off that game, the writers. Dan Hauser, Michael Lonesworth, and Rupert Humphreys. They had a, a real skeletal kind of structure of how they wanted the story to be, but they didn't commit themselves, or restrict themselves, rather, of, making, of etching everything in stone from day one. You know, it was a very, it was an evolutionary process, you know, and they would see some things that would work and some things that wouldn't. And so the stuff that didn't would get cut, and the things that did, that they, they would focus on that. So it was, we felt like we had a really good relationship with the writers. We were kind of working together, even though we really didn't work together that often. They were watching our sat, our rushes, and they would look at our tanks, and they would write according to our strengths and weaknesses. So it really felt like a big team effort, which it was. Yeah, there was a day where I went in, and I was the only one there, and they just had me walking back and forth. And they would say, all right, now do it as if you're injured, don't make it like a specific injury, but you know, maybe just hobble a little bit. Oh yeah, I remember that. All this stuff. And I, and I, I mean, I walked for like two hours just back and forth on the stage kind of thing. And finally I said, what am I, what am I even doing this for? And they said, well, somebody out there is going to just have John walk. And just to see if they can break the game. <laughs> they were constantly saying, how can we make sure people can't break the game? Because people can try. Oh yeah. So, one thing that I did at one point was, and I don't, I don't think that it's in there. I don't know for sure that it's not either. But as I was just walking back and forth, I at one point turned around and went, 
Come on, what the hell? <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? You're playing. You're like, oh, this is I guess if you do that, you have that happen. Yeah. That was Rob. Improv. <laughs> so some people say, what's the hardest part? I swear to God, the hardest part is crouch running. Oh. <laughs> that was it. That's the hardest part. Because imagine you're doing it for like six hours. Yeah? And then you gotta do it with, with no with no weapons. Then you gotta do it with one gun. Then you gotta do it with two guns. Then you gotta do it with a rifle. Then you gotta do it with a shotgun. It's a it's a killer workout on the fives, I'll tell you. <laughs> Thank you very much. If we had horses, what would we name them? Oh, of course, great question. I'd probably be the guy that names his horse Tuesday. <laughs> you know that joke? A riddle, I guess it's a riddle, actually. Cowboy rides his horse into town on Tuesday. <laughs> the next day he leaves on Friday. How is that possible? <laughs> I'd probably, I don't know. I, had, uh, I think I might, might go with what Arthur called his horse before. Bodicea or Boudicca, depending which way you I think I'd go with that. And uh, Barbie Horse Adventure, yeah. Tell your mom it's called Red. I mean, actually, that's kind of a cool name. Red Dead Redemption's a mouthful. I think I'd prefer that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And tune in for Barbie Horse Adventure 3. <laughs> Hi, so what's my question? I know that. Oh, uh, feel free to adjust the mic a little lower. Thank you. Uh, I know that in Red Dead Redemption 1 and Red Dead Redemption 2, you only have. Um, love interest. I know Abigail is the wife and uh, Mary Lynn is your like kind of ex-girlfriend. Out of all of the uh, characters in both of the games, gang or people you meet on side missions, who would you personally choose to be the love interest? Taylor Weedolf. <laughs> That's when my wife watches this, she could be like, good job. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I, it's kind of a, it's a it's a kind of a tragic situation for Arthur, you know. And I don't know if he actually fulfilled a, a, a good relationship that would, might take away from the tragedy, you know. But yeah, obviously things don't work out with Mary. That's sad, and it's kind of Arthur's loyalty to the gang that screws that up. But uh, a lot of people like Charlotte, you know, the, you know the widow that Arthur helps teach to learn how to hunt. That sounds like a, a lot of people think Sadie would have been, but you know, I. I don't, sometimes, you know, characters don't need a romantic aspect to their story. And I think it h helps with Arthur's tragedy if, you know, it's, it's not, it's not, it's not a very happy situation. But I think, uh, you know, I think he's, I think he's better off alone, you know. And also, I remember the guys at Rockstar would say, he's got TB. You know, if he gets a little bit too intimate with someone, it's kind of a death sentence he's passing on to them. I think Downs was enough. We don't need Arthur to spread tuberculosis all over New Austin or anything, do we? Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Hey, it's Hosea. You look great. That's thank fantastic. You. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if there was any really emotional moment during the production of uh, Red Dead. Oh, well, my. Yeah, loads. For me, the, the scene that you see with Arthur and John, and you're my brother scene, that. That was the last thing that I shot as as far as performance capture goes, and I, I assume it was yours too. Right? Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, we've got the stage, and there are several employees from Rockstar, the director, some animators, probably 10 or so, kind of there on the stage. There's also upstairs offices where you have a bunch of people that are working up there that never come down to the stage, whatever. But this, for that scene, Everybody that worked at Rockstar that was in that building came down, so there were probably 40, 50 people down there. Yeah, everyone came down. It's like five years yeah. we've been working together. And it was kind of the finale. So not only was it uh, the scene, meaning what the scene meant, and we all understood what that was at that point. Also, it was such a, a moment for everyone that had worked so hard on that project up until that point that as soon as the director said cut, we'll take that one. Every, I mean, everyone just kind of melted. <laughs> it's done. So, but it's sad. It's bittersweet too, yeah. Yeah, we were. I, um, I knew, I mean, I remember one of the first things I did was that mission, that certain mission with Downs, with the debt collecting, and it's very specific. 
stage directions, Downs coughs in Arthur's face. And I, I go to the, our director, Rob Edge, and I'm like, what's that all about? He goes, oh yeah, yeah, you get TV. And I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So I'm Googling when they found a cure for TV, and I'm like, oh, this doesn't look well for Arthur. So, spoilers, I'm sorry. And, and so, Four years I'm working on it, knowing what's you know what Arthur's demise is going to be, but not knowing the exact details of it. So when that when we finally got the sides for those, Arthur has four different endings, you know. So there's a higher low honor version of going to help John, and then there's a higher low honor version of going back for the money. And when we did those four scenes, particularly the first one of the four, that was emotional for me, because this was something that I knew was coming for years, and finally doing it was. I just wanted to make sure that I did it well, you know? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. He is too. But, yeah, your, I gotta say, Rob, your character development from Red Dead 1, and then with just when we see the younger John Marston in Red Dead 2, that was an amazing job with the way we see John's progression to becoming the man that he is. But with, from my experience, again, going back to what I was saying earlier, you know, it's up to the player, really, how how you, Arthur's redemption could be a very uh, honorable path, or it could not be, you know, and that's, that's up to you guys. And I love the fact that Rockstar offers you the freedom to be able to, uh, to play the game in your way. No two people have the same playthrough on Red Dead, you know, and that's the beauty of it, I think, is that you have that much freedom, and that it's open world. I mean, Rockstar do open world pretty amazing. I'm, I'm biased, but I think they're the best at it. And it was a joy to, to be witness to that firsthand, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, I agree with everything you said, by the way. Um, but I, I think, yeah, that one of the things about the story of Red Dead Redemption is that you get to uh, play this character that doesn't really have uh, a sense of direction. Like, where am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? And then once he finds that, he finds his purpose, his sense of purpose, his sense of this is, this is what I want, and I know that. I think that um, we all kind of go through that in real life. We go through stages, and this is what's important to you now, and then sometimes you just don't know what it is that you want. But when you find it, there's nothing that can stop you from getting to it, from protecting it. I think that it's easy for people to enjoy that story because we all kind of live that way. Too. Maybe that's maybe I'm the only one that grew up around the banks. I really do think there's a big parallel between a lot of people's lives and the story that John made. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sorry, I sorry. <laughs> I didn't hear that. What's that? Do you think there will be a spot on Rockstar for a kid again? Oh! I would say so, man. I don't know. I do know that so Jack. Yeah, we had a few Jacks. There were, there were four or five Jacks. They kept getting big. They kept growing. Yeah. So they're like, oh, you're too big now. Sorry, you're fired. <laughs> the one who did the voice, it was a woman who did, ended up doing the voice. We worked for about, yeah, three or four different Jacks. Yeah. yeah. But having a kid as an NPC can be pretty dodgy, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of gamers out there who just like to destroy whole towns and whatnot, so having children as NPCs is a little weird, you know. I mean, it's maybe more GTA, I don't know. <laughs> right, more Barbie horse adventure, yeah. Thank you, man. Hi, so I've got a couple questions for you. Um, one of you. Roger, this is the second time you're going to well, you want to voice him? No, I want, yeah, voice, I would do the performance capture. You know, voice acting and, and performance capture are, are really, really different, you know? And we keep calling performances and gaming voice acting. And it's not, it's not really the case anymore. You know, voice acting, you're in a booth, you've got your script right there in front of you. You've only one tool at your disposal to create a character, which is very, very challenging. Performance capture is much more akin to film or TV. You know, we learn the script, we rehearse it. Uh, the only difference being is that, like I said earlier, we're wearing spandex, but the camera can be anywhere as well. Uh, but, 
Yeah, I would love to play the thing. I'd love to do the performance capture for it too, whether it be in game or on or, or film, you know? I just love the whole pathos of, the, of Ben Grimm, because he's the only one out of the Fantastic Four who gets physically changed, you know? And uh, I think there's a lot of tragedy in that. Uh, but yeah, there's no, gaming is just exploding at the moment, and I think it's such a fascinating medium. There's loads of characters that I'd love to work on, and there's loads of new characters that I'd love to work on too. Uh, I'm grateful that Red Dead is such so well so well liked by so many that you know those opportunities are now starting to come our way. You know, it's it's a great thing. I love I love working in games. It's awesome. And uh, Rob, who would you want to play if you were to be a character of the game? A character other than John? Yeah. I, like like I said before, I I think it would be fun to play a role where it's a not likable character. I think that would be a challenge, and it would be, it would be fun. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. The evil Rob Weedle. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> let's see. If, uh, we'll move on to the next person. We only have a few more minutes. And again, thank you all very much. For I just want to say thank you because I um, read the production and inspired me to write a book series. That's I think both books out about 50 chapters right now, and about 200 reads. And I actually people like being like, when's the next chapter? And That's it has awesome. This whole story lines so and stuff like that. So. Thank you very much. It's, I'm very invested in my characters. Um, so, yeah, thank you for inspiring the stories and stuff like that. So um, Yeah, um, I just had a question because I'm just getting out of acting school for uh, voiceover and stuff like that. So, um, just like advice on getting into the mocap and the voiceover world there because I really want to do mocap. <laughs> well. What I would say is, practice makes perfect. You know, work begets work. Get, throw yourself in and be, challenge yourself as often as you can. You know, there's no growth without challenge. Get ready for a lot of rejection. Don't take it personally, even when it is personal. One of the things about, you know, putting yourself out there is that you, you do, by, by nature, you have to develop a bit of a tough skin. And once you, do, once you put yourself up for a job, once you audition, once it's done, forget about it. Move on to the next one. You know, it, it's, uh, it's such a joy to be able to look at auditions as an opportunity to, to show your wares, you know. Some people get nervous, some people say, oh, I hate auditions, I don't really work well at them. But, you know, look at them as opportunities to flex your muscles and, uh, and get your face in front of casting directors or voice in front of them, you know. And uh, the best of luck, the best of luck. I wish you the best of luck. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. All right. Lovely to you, sir. All right. I was just wondering. Um, what performance in the game do you think went most under the radar? What was the most underrated performance where someone like really killed it? Oh. The Sun Worshipper was in the barrel of last, wasn't he? Yeah. He was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, it's hard to say. I mean, I think, that, I think that anyone in the Vanderlyn game, honestly, deserves to be right here at this table with us, everyone. And uh, you know it doesn't work that way, but it would make sense to me. Give that the guy who played Cornwall was quite a badass. You know, most of the people that we worked with, they'd never done performance capture before. And they would show up sometimes thinking that it was a voice acting gig, and they wouldn't learn their script, and they'd be like, hang on, I've got to be off book, oh no! And when you take into consideration how many noobs, for lack of a better word, how many actors were just fresh out and had never done this before, and the way that they would just jump in was really, really cool. And obviously we tried to, you know, make them feel comfortable and support them as well. Because obviously if they're comfortable, we'll get a better scene out of them, you know? But so many people, I think if we've got to move, we forget. It was the first time they had ever done anything like that. And I think they all did a fantastic job. It was a joy working with them all. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, just a simple question. I want to know what both of your, uh, what you say your favorite scene to perform, or just your favorite scene from the game? That walk up to Braithwaite Mansion is pretty epic. Yeah. I remember doing that, that was fun. But I I like the one with the nun too. That was when Arthur and Missy's, you don't often see that in a Western, you know, where the main protagonist shows his vulnerability and he says he's scared, you know? Like, you don't often see that in Westerns. So I thought that was pretty cool. And she was a great scene partner too. Yeah, there, so there were so many funny characters and I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed like Red Dead Redemption, Seth. Seth might be my all-time favorite, the Grave Digger. <laughs> so that, guy, that guy was not only funny as a character, but just funny all the time. And 
it was really, really cool experience working with them and also a very big challenge to not just laugh at the time. So I'm gonna cut you up piece by piece. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. Thank you really very much. much. <laughs> thank you. Hello. Hey there, I just wanna thank you guys both for your hard work on the game. Thank um, you, man. In so the good. first game, John explains that he had a daughter. And was that in between the two games there? Like, there's a time gap. I was looking all over Beecher's Hope for a grave, though, so I don't know. I don't know either. I, I did ask. Um, I asked, no, I didn't directly ask the director. I asked someone to find out for me. Just casually asked, what, what happened to John's daughter? What, what happened? And I never got an answer. <laughs> and I know that there, I know that the question was that. I just never got an answer. And I thought, well, I guess that's what happens when you ask questions that you don't need to know the answer to. You just don't get the answer. So I'm not sure. It remains a mystery. Maybe the aliens took her. Yeah. Or Gavin. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, we got two more questions. Two more questions. Thank you very much. Hello. Hey, it's an awesome. 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 Uh, so in Undead Nightmare, how does it feel for like the zombies like attacking and stuff? How will it how will it feel? Like, how does it feel? Dude, Undead Nightmare was so awesome there for so many reasons. Thank you for the question. Um, there was we didn't really do a lot of that, them running and then actually attacking with me as an actor, I guess. But um, it is pretty intense when you're playing it on that yes. so it is. But what was really cool was that there were a couple days where they would have extras come in to be the zombies. Well, if they didn't have enough of them, then I had to play the zombies. And it was so much fun because I thought this, everyone's just going to make fun. And sure enough, every time I would, you know, get done with the scene, and God, you are the worst zombie in the world. It was so fun, you know, but I just thought it was so ridiculous. Everybody had a really, really good time. Thank you. And hello. Hi. Uh, I have a question. What is your opinion on the save Brenda online hashtag? Oh man. I hope you guys get what you're looking for, you know, but you know, a lot of people have asked for our, our input and our, our, our support and you know there's not a lot we can do unfortunately. But I hope you guys will get get the updates you want. You know, and you know Red Dead is an amazing game because of you guys, because of the fans. So, uh, you know, your support and your enjoyment of our work means the world to us as actors. But, uh, yeah, I, I hope you guys get what you want, man. I uh, wish you the best of luck with you. Thank you so much. Like, raise their voice yeah. to talk to you. I we wonder. had to do it all twice. Yeah. Yeah, That's the attention to detail is insane, isn't it? We really, yeah. They, they, here's, a, here's a good example. Now, we all know about the horse balls when you go into the cold, you know, everyone knows. But here's something not a lot of people do know, is that there are some NPCs and they recorded specific dialogue for the very rare instance where if you decide to hog tie an NPC and put them on the ground on the back end of a horse, and then just hang around long enough where, until the horse starts to poop, they've got dialogue recorded where the person will go, Ah, oh, no, get it off me, ah, oh, ah! Oh. I mean, this is... This is how much they think about people trying to break the game and all these little situations that they're trying to anticipate that the player is going to do. They got dialogue down for that. And I, if, you ever, if, it, if you ever get the chance, you might, it depends which NPC you hog tie, but there is dialogue for them to start shouting and screaming if a horse starts to poop on them. Wow. <laughs> that is a level of detail that I did not.